All right, good morning and welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Chester Kinnick and today we're gonna to use FTK. Now, FTK takes a bit for bit copy of a, of a drive or a USB or anything with a storage device. And this is important because in digital forensics, uh, we can hide information in what's called slack space. And so we have to create that, that bit for bit copy. So if you've ever taken, say something, a, a file or a directory off of one system, usually Windows, and I use Windows as an example, and you want to drag that over to a USB, maybe to give to a friend or somebody, you're basically taking just that file. You're not taking the underlying information. <clears throat> and so what we can do, uh, or what criminals could do, is they can hide information in between different file structures within a drive. So you'll notice that I've got this drive up here, right? This is a typical hard disk drive. Uh, it serves our purposes, and I know that I'm going to have somebody out there that's watching this video and they're like, well, that's not really how it works. You really oversimplified it. Yeah, I, I know I oversimplified it because we're trying to we're trying to get the short, sweet version, not the long-term version, right? Um, <clears throat> and you can kind of see here that we have sectors and we have tracks. So in a typical hard disk drive, you've got different sectors, uh, and a sector would be this little section right here, and then different tracks. So this would be uh, track zero, sector one, right? and then sector two, and then sector three, and maybe it would be track one, then track two, so on and so forth, right? Um, and the way this works is that if I, if I wanted to, right, let's say that I've got a file, let's say that this sector, right, track zero, sector one, right there, let's say that that has a full capability of holding uh, 168 kilobytes, right? And I just made this number up, so don't go, don't go off on a tangent with me, right? But let's say that I put a file in here, right? And the computer says, okay, you've got a file that's 150 kilobytes. We're gonna take that 150, we're gonna put it in this 168, it leaves 18 kilobytes left over, but we're not gonna use that, right? That's all gone now. So we've got that little bit of space left. What I can do is I can hide data in there, right? It doesn't show up on the typical file drive. I'm hiding information in there. Uh, a lot of times, more often than not, we're not really trying to hide something in there, but let's say that you put a picture in there, right? So you got this picture, it's 150 kilobits long, we have 168 available, but then you delete it. Make sense? And then you, maybe you put something else on there, maybe that something else is only two kilobits long. Well, we still have 166 kilobytes still available to us. And even though the, the information is deleted, right? That picture is gone, that doesn't mean that it's really gone. So if you've ever taken something to a recycle bin on your Windows machine, or you've deleted it from your USB or whatnot, it's gone, you can't see it, unless you kind of use a tool like FTK. Uh, and so there's other tools that'll do this as well, but FTK uses a bit for bit copy, which means we're gonna copy the entire thing, every little bit on that drive, included that deleted information, and then we can extrapolate and get that information back, even if it's been deleted. Even if it's been deleted three times, we can we can get that information back. Uh, this is why a lot of times people say, oh, well, you have to write it with zeros, then ones, then zeros, then ones, and that'll completely destroy the information because you can't get to it, right? Uh, and when you think about that, I want you to think of a picture. If I draw a picture and then I paint over the picture and I go outside the lines, then I paint again, you can't really see it, but there are traces of it there. If we peel back that paint, you may be able to get some of that information back. And that's why they say you have to rewrite, 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 all right? But that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna use FTK, right? The first thing we need to do is we need to go to VirtualBox over here uh, and we're going to download the extension pack, right? So here I am, virtualbox.org, right? Go down a little bit uh, a little bit of ways and you see VirtualBox 7.0, the VM VirtualBox uh, extension pack. We need to get that downloaded and installed. I've already got it downloaded and installed, but it's important for what we're doing today, all right? So I've got that downloaded, I've got it installed, I created a new Windows 10 forensic um, system, um, and I've downloaded FTK already in there, but I need to make some adjustments. Since we're going to use a USB, I went ahead and took the liberty of grabbing a one gigabyte USB, very, very small, and I recommend for this exercise that you do something small, okay? And here you can see that I got 957 megabytes free of 958. If we open this up, you can see that I put a lot of dog and cat pictures in there. I also put my dissertation in there, right? So a lot of information, and I deleted some pictures in there. I deleted some things in there, okay? I deleted a text document, and I deleted some pictures. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take a bit for bit copy of this, and we're gonna explore it and see if we can't find that deleted information all in Windows 10. Now, this in our VM, this system 
right now is on my main computer, my host computer for all my virtual box and stuff. So we need to kind of change some things around. We're gonna to go to settings in our Windows 10 forensics box. I've already downloaded the extension pack. I'm gonna to go to USB, I'm gonna enable it. I'm gonna do 2.0. Now, almost everybody is going to have a 2.0 uh, unless you bought some really high-end USBs. This is where I tell you the smaller the USB for this exercise, the better. If you've got a 32 gigabyte USB or a 64, it's gonna take time to do a bit for bit copy. Um, and you really don't need it for what we're doing. So I grabbed the smallest I've got, which is a one gig. I used to have a 512 megabyte one, uh, but it's, it no longer operates. It's, I guess I've been writing on it and deleting it too often, but I've got that. So USB 2.0, unless you bought a brand new USB recently and paid money for it, you're probably on this 2.0, probably, okay? Uh, so we're gonna click that and we need to mount it. So I'm gonna click this plus button right here. I've already got that USB plugged in. And then you'll notice that we have all these devices that my computer is showing up as USB uh, extensions, things that we can add into there, right? I think I've got my Corsair cooling node in there. Uh, I've got an unknown device. I've got my microphone that I utilize. There's just a lot of stuff in here. So you may be trying to figure out which one is your USB. Well, it's very simple, very scientific. Be prepared, you unplug it, right? and then make a list of all these items, and then when you unplug it, that item will disappear, and then you plug it in, and then you know which item is your USB. In my case, I already know it's the mass generate generic mass storage device. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna press OK. It's now attached to my Windows 10 system. So I wanna point out, let me go back in here, uh, back to this PC. I've got that drive F right there. We're gonna start this machine up, but since I've mounted this onto my virtual machine, as soon as I start this VM up, this is not going to be available on my host operating system anymore because it's gonna be explicitly for my virtual machine. So we'll give it a second, we'll let it boot up and you'll see what I'm talking about. You should hear this, if you've ever unplugged things, something from a USB, you should hear that noise that it makes. And there it is, right? So it just popped in there and you can see here that that F is missing now, it's now attached to my VM, all right? If you did everything right. All right, so we have our Windows 10 up and going. Let me go ahead and log into this thing. And for those that don't remember, it's password with a zero instead of an O and then an exclamation mark at the end. I've already installed FTK Manager right here, but I'm gonna show you where to get it. So you're gonna open up your Internet Edge and I'll put this link, I'll put the link below so that you've got it. We need to download it to our Windows 10 VM for what we're doing today, right? And I can just do a quick Google search and we'll call it FTK Imager. And it's from, I'm gonna to go to products FTK Digital Forensics right there. And you can see that it says download the free FTK Imager. That's what we want. We're, uh, once you've downloaded installed properly, you should have this access to data FTK Imager. That's what we want. We also wanna make sure that our USB is attached properly. So I'm gonna go back over to here and you can see that I have my USB drive and we see all those cat images and everything else like that. Which by the way, if you're ever trying to move something to your virtual machines from your, your core machine, this is actually a pretty easy way to do it uh, from that aspect, okay? Uh, let's open up FTK Imager and let's get started. All right, I'm gonna blow this up. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to create a disk image. So we're gonna hit file. We're gonna go down here to create disk image. It's gonna ask us, hey, what type of file evidence we want? We can do image file, logical drive. We're gonna do physical drive right there. And then we need to do the down button, down arrow. We're gonna find that generic flash drive because we don't wanna be taking a image of the current drive that our VM is on. It, it's not gonna end up well, don't do it. If you accidentally do it, stop it. Uh, it's, it, it causes issues with the system, okay? Uh, because FTK Imager is taking basically an image of itself and it's, it's never ending. So I'm gonna hit next and you can see here where do we wanna put it. We're gonna add dead image destination right here. I'm gonna add. We're gonna do EA, E01 or E01, excuse me. That's FTK's image file. We're gonna hit next. And then it's gonna ask us for all the stuff. I'm just gonna put demo. I'm gonna put demo. You could add a case number. What I would normally do is I would add, depending on where you work, right, what you do. But for cases for our home lab, we're just gonna do demo and demo. You put evidence number in there, unique description. I'm gonna say USB one, just like so. Examiner, this is where you'd put your name like so, and then any notes that you want. I'm gonna hit next. Where do I wanna put it? Well, I wanna put it on my um, on my uh, desktop for this purposes. So let me scroll down. We're just hit desktop right there. Okay, and then I have to name it something and I'm just gonna call it USB one. I could do a case number. I could do anything like that, not a big deal. 
and it says fragment size in megabytes, 1500 compression. Uh, it's asking zero for the fastest or six. Just leave it uh, as you normally would. And then you can do encryption if you really want to. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. I'm gonna start it up. Now this will take for one gigabyte uh, of a bit for bit copy, I'm looking at probably maximum of 10 minutes. And if you remember correctly, I've only got two cores uh, attributed to this Windows system. So it really depends on how fast this thing's gonna go. But we'll be back here in a second. So this took about five minutes to complete. And you can see when we're done, we've actually got hashes, right? And it's telling us what the name is, the sector count, uh, the MD5 hash as well as the SHA-1 hash, and then if there's any bad blocks, which in this case there are none. So we've completed this image uh, within the same, within the, within the item, and if I minimize this, you can see we've got that image, that EO1, and then I've got a text. And that text is gonna provide us the specific information about what we scanned, uh, which is useful if you're doing any type of enterprise investigation or well, I'm not, I'm not gonna pretend how law enforcement does their thing. I'm sure it's different. I'm sure that it's similar in some respects and different in others. Uh, but for this case, it's, it's kind of what we're doing here, all right? So now we kind of wanna investigate this image. So we're gonna hit this little square button, this plus button right here, add evidence item. It's gonna be an image file right here. We're gonna hit next. We're gonna say the path. We just have to find it right here, that EO1 file, and then finish. And you can see that it gives us this hexadecimal kind of, uh, uh, item right here, right? If I hit the plus arrow, I can see that we've got two points here. We have our partition and we have unpartitioned space. If I hit the plus on this and then the plus and I just keep on bringing it down, if I bring it under the root system, you can see that it should have access to all the cat images and everything else we found. Let me bring this up real quick so we can see what we're doing here. Here's our USB. We have cat images one through six JPEG and dog one through six JPEG and then this, uh, this copy of my dissertation that we've got going on here. Let me close that out. But you can see here that we've got secret.txt and we can see size one and the zero. Now, if I bring up the zero, there's nothing here. But if I hit the one, we can see that this is secret information delete immediately, which it was deleted. It's not inside that file structure. So somebody deleted it and we were able to find where it was, okay? You can see in my dissertation that we've got some file slack right here with 15. If I click on that, you can see that it gives us a little bit of information, but nothing major because the main file is right here. And we can open that up. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can see here that I've got secret.png, secret1.png, and we have zero, which shows us nothing, but here we have a size of 13. If I click on that, we can see that it's top secret. And then secret2 right here, we can see that's top secret. So kind of, a, kind of a neat little tool that allows you to not only take images, but to see the, the deleted information on there. Now this is useful if somebody's ever deleted something off the drive that was really, really important. Uh, you could technically get it back using this image as well, as long as they didn't record over it, right? As long as it wasn't corrupted. Now, it's kind of hit or miss, right? If they just deleted it, you could probably get it back. I don't recommend doing it on a full hard drive, but on a USB, not too shabby. Uh, but you can kind of see how this tool works. Send myself this E01 right here, and we could do further investigations on it later down the road, which we will. So this is the very first start of our forensic investigations, uh, and I hope this was useful. If so, please like, subscribe, and hit that little alarm button. We'll see you next time. Thanks.